Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode of Coffee with Zach. Hope you're all having a great day because you're in for a great conversation. We've got Hillary Reese on to talk about the business behind the music business and what it was like breaking down those barriers and the challenges she faced along the way. We're going to get into it in just a couple seconds, but first, some housekeeping things. Hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment down below, tell us what you think. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And then lastly, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, the review goes a long way. It gives us the feedback we need to keep going. So without further ado, let's just uh, jump right into it. Hey, what's up? Hi, I'm good. How are you? Good, good. How's it going? <laughs> anything, it's good. Uh, anything exciting happening? Um, I'm just moseying all along over here, <laughs> trying to get stuff done, but nice. I do have a lot I've been working on recently, uh, a lot of new music, so that's always always fun. Yeah, it's always good. I'm just about set. Um, how are you? I'm all good. Thank you so much for having me on today. I really oh, appreciate it. Oh, thank you for, yeah, I was going to say thanks for coming on. This is uh, really cool. So, I was doing a little bit of research, and... I want to get your take on this before we kind of start. Okay. I noticed there was like an interview you might have done. It was like a transcription of it I was reading on somewhere online. You, uh, one of the questions was like, what do you want people to ask you more often or something like that? Right. And you had said um, you wanted more business related questions. Is that right? Definitely. It's, yeah. um, especially just because, I mean, I don't think people realize as artists, that's a big part oh. of what I'm working with. Um, yeah. And just, you know, it's, I think it's a great thing when you ask an artist, you know, how is it going from a business standpoint, you know, what triumphs have you had challenges, you know, obstacles. I just think it's really cool. And that's what I enjoy watching just because it makes me as an artist feel more, you know, yeah, more like I'm in a community. <laughs> like I'm not crazy. Business is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I've always been a huge fan of like behind the scenes types. Of right. Things. Um, sometimes I'll be honest, I'm almost more interested in that than whatever the actual, you know, topic is sometimes, um, especially with right. movie. I, I find behind the scenes of movies more entertaining than the actual film sometimes. So definitely. And sometimes, yeah. you know, there's can be so sugar coated, you uh, know, when it comes yeah. to, you know, what we have in interview questions. So when you break it down and see the behind the scenes, I think you really get to see the artist and you know, get to really hear their full standpoint. Exactly. Yeah. In fact, I don't know. I don't know how many like formal interviews and stuff like that you've done, but like, aren't they kind of tacky sometimes and like formal without, they're just like somebody's reading off a list of questions almost, right? I mean, I appreciate all the interviews I get, but yeah. you know, I do like when you can get a little bit more personal and you know, it's not just always, what's your favorite color? You know? <laughs> Um, yeah but you know because there's times to be funny and light but my personality I'm more of a serious person in any, anyways and it's kind of hard yeah. for me to hide what's going on in my life and a big part of that is the business side of music you know sometimes I hate it sometimes I love it <laughs> yeah it comes in waves doesn't it? ups and downs right right yeah well I figured we could talk a little bit about business we kind of just jumped right into it there didn't we um, basically yeah <laughs> I guess, like, when did you realize it was a business? Like, I mean, did you just wake up one day and you're like, oh, music's a business. Let me jump into this. Like, <laughs> Well, I think I kind of fell into music. You know, mm -hmm. I started singing at eight years old and I started taking lessons just because there was a talent show at my school. It was something as simple as that. And we found this place, you know, near me that offered lessons. And then we realized that place is called Rock U2. Go check them out if you can. They have a ton of really talented kids there. But they were like, oh, we have this recording studio here and we can make you like a music video. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to do all my favorite covers. And that's exactly what I did as a 10 year old kid, you know? And awesome. I put the videos on Facebook and they went viral. And I was like, oh, dang. And then suddenly I was getting <laughs> calls and emails from people. And then I realized, like, oh my gosh, you know, there's actually a way to go about these things. There's a business. And then it was just me and my mom. And we're like, what do we do? <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, and it's I a think little. The first 
time I realized it was a business was just when I realized, and this is going to sound awful, how awful the music business can be, you know, it can be such a great thing, but then, you know, people will try to come after you sometimes. Mm -hmm. So that's the first time I actually was like, oh, this is, you know, a business and you've got to be quick on your feet and know your research, you know, just so you know who are the good guys and who are the bad guys, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I can imagine it was a lot to jump into, right? Definitely. Probably a lot for your, I mean, your parents too, right? Definitely. You know, and I was just a girl from Mississippi, a 10 year old at that jumping into all this. And then, you know, my mom has been a teacher her entire life. My daddy's been a football coach. I don't even know if my daddy realizes how deep I am into this business. Like you said, <laughs> I <don't> know that, <laughs> you know, so, but I love him for that. He doesn't get super yeah. swept up in, you know, all the little things. And me and my mom, we're really a team when it comes to all this and we've learned together you know, so that's been such a blessing having her there. But it was really weird because, mm. I mean, I had never known anything except my environment, you know, and that never included really anything music, especially the music business. Yeah. So, I mean, you're, you're from a smaller town, right? I am. Okay. That's a thousand people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So not, I'm assuming not too much of a music scene, right? I mean, there is, but there isn't at the same time. I mean, one of the things I appreciate, though, about where I'm from, there's not really a music business scene, but there's a music scene, you know? So yeah. I grew up, you know, seeing people, you know, on the coast of Mississippi, which is a pretty big place. And, you know, I went to New Orleans all the time. And on every street corner, you'll find a musician there. Oh, and yeah. then he we go to the catfish restaurant and there's usually somebody there and it's the true country music. So that's always nice to see. And the people around here, they play cause they love it. And that's always just really wholesome and just something as an artist you love to see, you know, especially when you get caught up in the music business and you get caught up with all the ups and downs of it, just go in and knowing that that person has a true genuine love for what they're doing. And you could tell it comes across in their music. So I think being from where I'm from really did show me, hey, if you want to do this, make sure you love it 1,000%. Yeah, so it seems like it's a really passionate music scene down there, right? Right. There is. You know, because there's not a big music business scene, people don't do this for the money or the fame or anything. Yeah. I truly do it because they love it and because, you know, music is a survival mechanism for me and for them, you know? That's awesome. Yeah. I remember... Um, I took like a school trip down to New Orleans and I, I definitely noticed the, the difference there versus we took another school trip, I think the year before to Nashville. It, it was, it was a, for a band trip. So right. it was, I mean, both trips were focused on music, but th there was a huge difference going to New Orleans than uh, Nashville. So right. everybody seemed a lot more passionate. Right. And I think, you know, with Nashville, it does have a bigger music business scene. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot more politics that go into that. Yeah. Um, and again, not that there's anything wrong with the music business. I'm in the music business. <laughs> I love it. You know? But there's definitely thoughts that go into your head and you change your perspective. And, you know, it can become toxic or it can become great. And I think with New Orleans, you know, especially things like Katrina affected them so deeply. Katrina affected Mississippi so much. So I think just going through traumatizing things like that, you know, really come across in your music. And in New Orleans, it's just an unreal amount of talent there. And it's on every street corner of every block, you know, yeah. it's everywhere. And they're <laughs> so passionate about what they do there. And in Nashville, they are too. So it's just really nice to see. But I think with New Orleans, they're not, there's not as big as a music business scene. So they definitely do it, you know, solely because they love it. I think just like Mississippi. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, we don't really have a huge music scene up here, but I think the people around here also do it for, you know, for themselves, not for the money. Because there's not a whole lot of money to be made in the music business here in um, right. Detroit or Flint or any one of the major yeah. cities up here. So I think... Um, having that passion that's driving everything 
is really important because you mentioned people getting caught up in the in the business side of things. Um, do you think that ever like burns people out a little bit? I think it does, but I mean, you know, it also can motivate them more, you know, which is really weird. And, you know, the more you're in this business, the more you can sort out who's genuine about what they love than yeah. who isn't, you know? And we all have to find that balance because you're never gonna be, you know, a an artist fully, you know, get the record deals and all that and the promotion deals. Not that you can't be an artist without that, but if you wanna, you know, do the actual music business stuff, you have to have find that balance. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I mean, a lot of people wanna do the music business route. A lot of people don't and that's completely fine. But if you do it, you have to make sure you find that balance. And some people can't, you know, so it's really difficult sometimes weeding through the people who are solely there for ulterior motives, you know, to exploit people or to become somebody that's just wants to be famous and make money, you know, <laughs> and doesn't have the true love for it. But I genuinely don't know how people do it without having the true love for it because it can be rough, you know, I mean, yeah. it definitely and. And, you know, you don't become successful and famous and rich overnight. So, I mean, I really don't know how they do it <laughs> because the music is the only thing that gets me through it. Yeah, that's, um, that's really important. You mentioned finding that balance. Um, how did you find that balance? I mean, just getting thrown into it like that. It, right. I mean, were there ups and downs with that alone? Definitely. I mean... I think, you know, with me, I wanted to do the whole music business and really explore and see what that was. Um, but I think I always just leaned on the music, you know, and that's really what got me through it. And it, it still is. I still probably, I'm more of an artist than I am in the music business. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, that was the really only true way to find that balance. And then I, you know, looked at how I wanted where I wanted my career to go and, you know, the audiences, I wanted to listen to my career. I was like, wow, if I can get this to a bigger audience and more people can listen, that would be great as well. And I think the music business is a vital part to that. So, you know, I was like, if I want to do this and I want, you know, more people to hear my music, I want to play the shows where more people can hear my music and really yeah. take this to the next step. I'm going to have to, you know, be in the music business and know the right people and get to know people, you know? So I always look for that motive of, okay, if I do this, I can end up making more music or, you know, kind of looking at the long term of things. Yeah. It's uh, it's big picture thinking, right? That's what right. kind of gets you through. Yeah. Um, so you, you mentioned you started out around eight or 10 or so, right? What were some of the, the key um, turning points in your, your career thus far? Um, that like, like at what point did you start getting really deep into the, the business side of things? Um, um, probably when I started going to Nashville and really, okay getting my feet wet you know I started I did my first Nashville trip at like 10 or 11 and I remember meeting with producers and writers and I remember the first time I did like a session of co-writes it went awful I was so scared to death <laughs> I, didn't know what to do. And I was like oh my gosh I suck at this crying to my mom you know but I think it really started turning around when I started owning my own artistry and speaking up and knowing exactly how I wanted my music to be. Um, and that's when things just kind of started clicking for me um, in every part of this. So, you know, that's really when things took off when I started really making the music I want to make. Yeah. Yeah. And you, uh, you mentioned owning your, your artistry and everything. Um, I listened to another one of your interviews. I think it was um, Dose of Did You Know a few months back? Probably so, yes. Yeah, I, I think um, you had mentioned in there that you like to be the creative director on your own projects. And um, I forget the exact word you used, but it basically you want everything you put out to have, you know, to represent yourself, right? right. Um, 
does that like build some confidence inside you to, um, you know, to go into those rooms and just nail it? It definitely does, but it also makes the process of doing it really scary, you know, because, yeah. you know, taking more responsibility, if it fails, you know, you're like, oh my gosh, this is on me. But if it goes great, you're like, yay. So, I mean, it's a risk, definitely. But, you know, what made me want to start doing that was, you know, in the beginning of figuring all this stuff, I was putting stuff out that I didn't like. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, wow, you know, this, I feel awful because this isn't me, you know, and certain people are enjoying it. And then certain people are enjoying it, you know, my fans. And I just feel like I'm not being authentic with them because I've been, you know, on social media since I was 10 and, you know, developing these relationships. And I want to just be more authentic. You know, I don't, I don't want this to really represent me. So I was finally just to the point, I was like, I can't keep putting out stuff I don't leave in life, you know? So I started, <laughs> making sure, like I said, going into every co-write and having ideas, telling my producer exactly how I want things on music videos, being creative directors, um, you know, and that really, I think, helped me just because it made it more me and I think it came across with my audience. Yeah, definitely. Um, so you mentioned producers, like plural. Have you worked with different producers along the way or has it been a solid team of people or...? I have. I, yeah. I've worked with some amazing producers, Kit Wells, Jeff Huskins, some different ones. And I think, you know, working with different producers, it gave me different perspectives on just how, you know, creatively everybody is different, you know, and you walk into a room and, you know, you work with somebody differently. And that was really character building for me. Um, in this business just because going around and just really figuring out exactly what I wanted and exactly how I wanted things ran, you know? So, I mean, that definitely was a big milestone for me. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you ever find that like when you're working with different people and you, you start getting these different perspectives, um, I guess what, what kind of learning goes with that? Cause I, you know, so, I mean, I think, the biggest thing is just realizing how different I am, you know, with different people, just realizing, yeah. oh, you know, I can go into this room and they make me feel comfortable enough to where I can share my thoughts and I can, you know, share how I want things. Whereas you might go into a different room and then somebody will shut you down. So you really have to learn too how to make your voice known, you know, because nobody's really going to look back and be like, hey, you know, how do you want this without speaking up? And it's especially hard being a girl in this industry and a teenager at that, you know, um, just because you go into these rooms and especially in Nashville and they're usually just full of older men. And so it can be really hard to break down those walls and say what you want. It can be really intimidating. So just learning how to do that was really, really helpful for me, you know, because you go into these rooms and you're scared to death and nobody's really there checking on you. So you kind of just got to yeah. fight through it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you mentioned like breaking down those barriers and uh, you know, saying what you want to say. What was the first time you, you said what you had on your mind and how was the, the reception? I think it was after I got my own. Um, first initial songs back um from the first time I really recorded in Nashville and some of them I liked and then some of them I was like I don't like this but I was like this is kind of on me because I didn't speak up when I was in the room and I was like you know I'm putting so much effort and time and money into this I really just need to like I can't afford to be wasteful so I made sure to have my voice known from then on and then too I've loved the outcome 10 times more so then I've just never stopped. And then people have been like, this girl needs to shut up. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh. <laughs> Do you ever have a, like any pushback um, when you speak your mind and you tell them how you want it? And I mean, I'm sure people are thinking like, what the heck, <laughs> you know, just because too, I mean, like I said, I can't afford to be wasteful. I don't come from a rich family. Mm -hmm. And I don't come from a family that also keeps their opinions to themselves. So I was like, you know, I'm just going to go into these rooms and be my most authentic self. And if they don't like it, okay. you know. And again, like I said, you know, being a woman in 
country music is not always the easiest thing, and especially being a teenager. You know, mm -hmm. people really don't want to respect you then. So you kind of have to go into these rooms demanding respect and, you know, saying exactly how you want things and exactly how you want things ran or else you're not going to get it. And, you know, yeah. a lot of people, they can walk all over you because you're a girl and a teenager and you just have to set those boundaries from the beginning. So I think, you know, people might be like, oh, my gosh. But then, too, you know, oh, well. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, well, yeah. Oh, well. And I literally, I've had one producer one time. I just got them to do like a mix on one of my songs. And I remember I was probably like 12 or something, 12 or 13. And I remember they called my mom. And my mom lets me handle everything creatively. She's in on all the business meetings. But creatively, that's me, you know. And he sent over this version, and I was like, I don't like that. That's not what I asked him to do, because I gave him, like, a page of notes a mile long, just because I didn't, I wanted it how I wanted it, you know. Yeah. I wasn't yeah. ugly or anything like that. I just, you know, I'm very specific, very particular, <laughs> you know. And he called my mama, and he was like, okay, don't tell her which version, version is which and see if she can tell the difference, which one I like and which one she liked. And I pinpointed the difference and I like the one I like. And I remember he's just sent back, okay, that's very unfortunate, good for you. And he told my mom, he's like, she's just a kid. She does not know what she's doing. She should not be handling this. So, I mean, you'll definitely get people like that who think, you know, Oh, I'm above you. I'm God just about, you know, <laughs> like, yeah. I, how dare you? <laughs> so I, you just got to figure out how to deal with an egotistical people and push through it. Because at the end of the day, if you're not happy with your own work, none of this is worth it. Yeah. So you've, you've built up a thick skin. Um, <laughs> it's only going to continue getting uh, thicker, I, I bet. Um, I mean, you can... Uh, would you say you could probably expect that for the rest of your career? Just, I mean, with how the industry is? I think you can, but I also think, you know, the more of a reputation you build up for yourself yeah. and the more credentials you have behind you, it does get a little bit easier. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just the more power, power you have behind you and too, you know, the more you can go into a room and be like, okay, well, you don't respect my boundaries. You don't respect what I'm trying to do here. You don't respect my opinion. Well, then we're not going to work together. Yeah. Whereas I think at the beginning, I didn't really know, you know, how to do that as well. And I would, you know, get a song back a year after I recorded it and my voice would be completely different or, you know, I've had different. <laughs> but again, at the beginning, you don't know and, you know, you can't really fight it because you're like, oh, I'm, I really don't know what I'm doing here. You know, I'm, I'm just starting out. Whereas I think now I can go in and I know how things are ran a little bit better and I'm still learning every single day, but in this business, knowledge is power. Definitely. Yeah. Uh, does the business change at all? Like over time? I mean, I would imagine so, right? I think it's changing so fast. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, it's core things are still there and I don't know if they're going to change anytime soon, but I think with social media coming into play, I mean, that's such a game changer. Um, just because you look at five years ago, I mean, social media was there, but it wasn't near as big as all the outlets we have now and the ways we have to connect with fans, which ultimately control everything. And that's such a powerful thing. So I think it's changing constantly and just going to continue to change. Yeah, definitely. Um, let's see. So you mentioned there's a lot of time and money and resources and everything that goes into it. Let's talk a little bit more about what goes into being in the business. Um, so let's start with time. What, what does a day in your life look like? What do you do? What's the first thing business related that you do when you wake up? Check my emails. <laughs> I'm <laughs> Like any girl boss would, check her email. <laughs> I check my emails just about first thing every morning, make sure everything's good. Um, and then, you know, schedule some co-writes, go into some co-writes. Um, I'm still in vocal lessons, and I probably will be for the rest of my life just because I love continuing to learn. 
you know, I think a lot of people think they outgrow vocal lessons and I'm like, there is still so much, you know, mm -hmm. you just learn about how everything works because it's not just making a noise and then singing, you know, yeah. and then, you know, playing guitar, practicing with my band shows, it's different every single day, but that's what I love about all this. No day is the same as the one before. Yeah. So it's not that like monotony and just a boring atmosphere of doing the same thing every day. And it's right. That's nice. Does that ever get exhausting? It does. Yeah. And, but the thing is, is half the time I don't realize I'm exhausted. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll be in the studio forever and ever and ever. And I'll be like, Oh my gosh, another take, another take, another take. And then I'll go back to my hotel or get in the car or whatever. And I'll be like, Oh my gosh, I can barely move. You know? <laughs> the moment I get so excited and I don't realize what's happening and then I'm just trained after but that's how you know it was a successful work day <laughs> yeah the sign of success is uh you're in pain or exhausted there's always a a negative thing that's like sign of success isn't it no pain no gain <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> um so you mentioned like there's f some financial resources that go into it too. Um, I don't know how, how much you want to share, but I mean, what does it cost to do like a music video, um, for example? I think it's different, you know, for everybody um, mm -hmm. and just who you're working with. You know, I know people in Nashville who have paid 60 grand on one music video that has done, you know, nothing. And <laughs> I hate to be ugly like that, but I think, you know, really a lot of what people should be putting their money and their investments into is social media, you know, and I feel like a granny half the time using social media. I'm like <laughs> on Instagram not knowing what the heck to do, but you know, it really, it does control everything in this business nowadays. And that can be a good and bad thing, but I'll see people who spend 60 grand on a music video and it really not go anywhere, you know, or then I'll see people who do, a $200 music video and then it blow up. So, I mean, it's different with every videographer. It's different, you know, with every person and it's not necessarily, you know, this price is going to get you this many views. And I think right. a lot of people, especially starting out in the business, I know I thought that way, thought that, you know, and I used to think, you know, if I had this good of headshots, I was going to get this good of shows or <laughs> have this likes on Instagram when in reality, it's not like that, you know? So yeah. I think, really the main important things developing that relationship with your fans and social media investment but starting out you know my parents and maybe we were paying for everything you know as far as national trips and you know getting the music produced just because people don't realize with independent artists you don't have somebody just handed you this stuff mm -hmm. you know but I was very fortunate enough to get deals with producers or work out certain things, you know, or just do demos. I do a lot of demos, you know, instead of full blown produced songs. And that's how I got by. And I was very, very grateful for those. So I think people definitely need to take into consideration what it's like to be an independent artist because it's never really, it's never easy. One small victory is a big deal. You know, one small show or one small, you know, video can change an independent artist's life yeah and you can't let up either right like right as soon as you let up that's when things start to slow down i feel like right. that's a common thing i've heard um in music especially like you, you always got to be putting something out that uh, i feel that feels like it would get exhausting too in and of itself right and especially you know with being an independent artist you know it's you you know yeah. you're the one coming up with all these ideas um, funding them you know making sure you have that return investment making sure everything is executed perfectly you don't have a team behind you lining all this stuff up you know so that makes it things a little bit more challenging and two you know you have all these people coming to you and like oh I can make things a million times easier and some of them can and then some of them are out to exploit you or scam <laughs> you you really have to be really careful because I know I have my horror stories just like the next artist, you know, <laughs> but I mean, there are people I'm so grateful for in this industry and it's just difficult to weed through those people. Yeah. 
Um, you, you, you mentioned a good term, return on investment. What, I'm trying to think of how I want to phrase this, what was your best return on investment, I guess? What was the thing, what, like what single thing you did um, gave you the biggest return? Um, probably just anything I've put into my social media, honestly. Yeah. Just because it gave me such an amazing way to reach, you know, my fans, whether that was, you know, doing a little video or doing, you know, getting by a $200 PA system so my lives would be better, you know, or, you know, getting my first guitar that costs like 80 bucks, you know, so doing little things like that, you know, or, you know, just doing anything into social media, I think has been the best investment because you get those fans organically and they're there, you know, they don't go away. Whereas a lot of things, if you put, you know, an investment into one specific song or one specific, you know, video or anything like that, you're going to get a really big high, but then it's going to drop really fast too. So, you know, it goes in and out and then it looks a little screwed up when those numbers are going, da, 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 da. you know, so I definitely think anything I've done in my social media and is the best just because those fans are there and they can actually give you feedback actually support your stuff so that's what all of this is about yeah so it seems like social media is like a consistent return right versus the ups and downs ups and downs are risks right right definitely <laughs> at the end of the day you're trying to minimize risk and maximize I don't know, what comes back to you i guess so right. <laughs> that makes perfect and, sense you know like I was mentioning earlier, I've heard of people spending 60 grand on a music video shoot <laughs> and, and you know, the numbers did okay. And then they didn't have another 60 grand to do another video. So yeah. everything kind of went back down, you know, <laughs> and I don't think people should have 120 grand sitting underneath them. Cause Lord knows I don't, I don't have 60 <laughs> grand, you know? but you know, just figuring out ways, you know, to keep a little bit more consistency. And I think just yeah. having organic fans and having that organic connection really does go a long ways. Definitely. Um, so talking about the fans, like what, what is your favorite part of having a fan base? I mean, I, do you like interacting with people or? I do, that is my yeah. favorite part. Um, and two, you know, just going to shows and having that connection, that is, electrifying it is the best part of doing all of this but it's so cool when i see people who have been like oh i followed you since you were like nine you know and my username used to be like nine-year-old country singer hillary reese like it was this long thing <laughs> but you know they'll be like oh i followed you since you were nine and you know it's so cool to see where you are now and i'm like oh my gosh how did they even like me back then, <laughs> you know? So, I mean, it's crazy just to see that, you know, and know that those people are still there. You know, when I go and play shows and, you know, seeing those people in the audience who I've seen interact with my post and I've seen on my live streams, that's just the coolest thing ever to know. You always have people in your corner, even when you don't know it, because this business can be very lonely at times. And it feels like, oh my gosh, nobody's, there for me or supporting me, but when you know you have those fans there, it really, it changes your whole perspective. It's like you've always got somebody, you've always got somebody rooting for you and cheering you on. And right. Really important to always have that stream of feedback too, right? And their voices matter the most, you know? And I think so many people in this business, they look at numbers and graphs and all this, but in reality, it's the fans who control everything, you know? <laughs> So, I mean, that's really powerful to know. Do you think fans ever influence what you put out or is that a boundary you um, like set for yourself? Um, I mean, I think my fans have been really supportive of what I have put out, but I think I try to keep, you know, my music for me. You know, I think when you start letting people influence your artistry, it can become really dangerous. Um, I do have very supportive fans, but, you know, there's always going to be some of those few haters or that could change in an instant or people could start hating me, you know, the next second, you know, or, you know, anything could happen. So when you start letting that affect your artistry and your relationship with music, I think that can be a really risky line. 
Yeah. Um, so I try to keep my music for me and I try to let anything I do creatively for me. Yeah. Definitely. I've noticed some parallels um, based on what you're saying to the, the media industry. Um, there's a lot of creators, especially on like YouTube, um, big platforms like that, where you know they gather a fan base up and then the algorithm kicks in and it starts promoting certain things over others. So then they right. feel like they have to fall into that trap of creating content for the algorithms and for the fans versus for themselves. And I feel like that's when people get burnt out. Um, right. Definitely. And it's hard when you get that, you know, high or you get that, you know, you feel like everything's happening for you at once and you have all these people reaching out to you and have so many opportunities and so many different routes you could go. And then that goes away. But I think, you know, that's for everybody. You're going to have phases where, you know, everything feels like it's falling into place. And then the next day you're like, oh my gosh, what am I doing? But, you know, I talk to people who have been in this business for 50 years and they're like, shoot, I felt that way my entire career. So I think it's just this business always keeps you on your toes, you know? So, I mean, it's scary, but I feel like it's something I've kind of gotten better at getting used to. But, I mean, it's just one of those things. I don't know if you ever really get used to it. Yeah. <laughs> there's, it's, there's always that adjustment curve, right? You're always right. Learning, you're always, there's always that fire under you kind of, making you work hard right right and i'm so yeah. grateful for everything i have and every opportunity i get i'm like oh my gosh i don't want it to go away you know <laughs> so, and i'm so grateful you know just for everything i get to do and i think i'm always looking over my shoulder like oh my gosh i get to do this like what is it am i dreaming is this like what is happening you know yeah does it does it ever feel like you're like you're not living your life you're living somebody else's life is it does but it's also like you know again I live in a very small town and you know nobody I've ever met has even really done this that's from around here you know <laughs> so it feels really weird it feels almost like I'm supposed to live this normal life and you know go to school and to regular high school and you know be on the cheer team even though I can't do a cartwheel <laughs> but it's okay I you know, can't either yeah. normal things and I'll even have like family members be like um you're not going to the prom I'm like well I'm homeschooled so I don't know how that would work <laughs> but it feels like you know really weird sometimes finding that balance because a lot of my friends you know they're in high school and they're doing normal things and it's homecoming week so they're gonna go roll people's houses and that's great but then it's like oh I have a co-write tomorrow and like who business me <laughs> you know yeah. I don't know it definitely is weird finding that balance and like oh I'm I'm living my life and I'm doing meetings and you know co-writes and being in the studio but then I think of to myself I would not give this up for anything you know I absolutely love this and music has always been such an outlet for me and it just always felt like something I was supposed to do because I loved it so much you know I mean I really couldn't yeah. imagine myself doing anything else yeah um do your I mean do your friends or family members or anybody in your circle do they ever like question you when you say you've got a business meeting or something and they're like oh, why can't you hang out or something like that um just... especially the ones I'm not super close to you know I mean there's people in my family who just disregard everything I do as a whole you know who won't even really acknowledge that I'm a singer because they think I'm supposed to just be like everybody else when in reality I am like everybody else I just you know I do it a little differently and I'm doing this kind of grown-up thing I know at such a young age but I really couldn't imagine myself doing anything else. So they'll be like, oh, you know, who do you think you are having a meeting? I'm like, I'm just trying to get by here, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> really just trying to do whatever helps. And, you know, yeah. And like, oh, you think your crap don't stay. You got a co-write. And I'm like, I'm just trying to make music. I'm just trying to live <laughs> my life. You're working. Right. Like, I'm I mean, at work. What do you <laughs> Yeah. You know, so it's definitely, so I'll have some, some family members that just disregard everything as a whole, but it's just one of those things where got to keep on trucking. Yep. <laughs> um, 
Let's see. So we've been talking about music and the business and everything a lot. What else do you do? Like, what do you I mean? What else do you do for fun? Yeah. Nothing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I think so many people ask me that. And it, literally, my best version of fun is writing a song or playing a show. You know, I, I feel like I'm so uptight. <laughs> but then when I get on the stage and I'm dancing around, like it feels like the most free thing ever. I mean, you'll never see me dancing around anywhere else. You know, so I get on stage, I turn into this different person and it's so electrifying. So that's my absolute favorite thing to do in the world. Um, but besides that, just normal things I do for fun, I sit in my car and I listen to music or, you know, <laughs> I go to a football game. I do stuff like that. I mean, but I'm a very chill person. So sitting at home and watching reality TV, it's also a go-to for me. <laughs> what's your What's your favorite reality TV show? Keeping up with the Kardashians. And I'm so sad it went <laughs> off. I'm like heartbroken. I feel like my family is like the Kardashians with the Southern version, <laughs> like the redneck. <laughs> <laughs> so like... It's crazy. So keeping up with the Kardashians is a good one. And then 90 Day Fiance, it's a bad obsession. <laughs> <laughs> and I need it, but I can't. Nice. If you could have your own reality TV show, um, what, what do you think would be the concept? Or what's the, <laughs> what's the pitch to the network? Um, I don't know. It'd be like keeping up with the Kardashians, but the podunk version. Like, <laughs> it's absolutely insane and super dysfunctional. I think that would be the main concept. And just, you know, podunk, like I said. Yeah. <laughs> so, literally, last summer, we, me and my mom and my brother were out there, and it was actually fall, about to be winter. We had a Walmart pull up. And we took some uh, saran wrap mm -hmm. and then tried to tape down the cover with saran wrap. And we got into such a big fight over it because it wasn't working. So just stuff like that. You yeah. know, <laughs> like, we literally took the edge of it and just going, going, going forever and ever. And it didn't work. The hurricane <laughs> destroyed it. So oh. I, stuff like that, just us getting over fights like that. And, you know, just seeing all the different, I feel like we all live such different lives, but we're all so close. You know, again, yeah. my daddy's a football coach. I'm doing the singing stuff. My brother's in college. So it feels like we're all just on different parts of the planet, but we're all super close, you know? Yeah. Um, so, you, I mean, you're all super close just in your whole circle. So business people, uh, friends, family, who has been your number one supporter? My mom, definitely. And okay. it's not even, I think people think she's like, yay, go team all the time. But that's really not <laughs> how she is. She's the person, and the reason I say she's my number one supporter is because she tells me how it is. And she'll yeah. tell other people how it is, you know. And she is not scared to, you know, call somebody out. She don't care if you won 10 Grammys. <laughs> like, <laughs> bull crap in her, uh-uh. That ain't, that ain't gonna fly. So definitely my mom, because she knows every part of every single aspect of this. And, you know, when I've had to make tough decisions in this industry, you know, she's been the one guiding me on how to get through it and just being somebody I can lean back on, you know. And she's always letting me have control of my own artistry and career, which is something I really appreciate because I see so many people my age in this business and their parents lead them around like a string puppet, you know, and it breaks my heart because I'm these kids, you know, they can't actually make the music they want to make or do the things, you know, they want to do. And my mama tells me every day, you sure you don't want to quit? This is a lot, <laughs> you know, but she's the first one to, you know, be helpful or supportive or go to Nashville with me. She's the first one to do anything like that, but. She's definitely not one of them mamas that's going to force me to do anything. And she's always told me, if you want something, you have to do it yourself. So, I mean, and that's one of the biggest things I'm grateful to my parents for um, is instilling that hard work ethic in me. Awesome. Yeah, just 
having somebody by your side who's going to tell you how it is, going to tell you the things you don't want to hear, right. that, mm, that's super important. It is. Mm. I mean, because people can be so, you know, two-faced in this business, mm -hmm. you know, subconsciously, you don't even realize it, you know what I mean? So it's just, it's very nice to have somebody that will tell you how it is and you know, tell other people how it is too, you know? And yeah. she definitely is the person too. If I get really stressed out over something, she'll be like, Hillary, if you, you know, can't make one meeting or if you can't do one thing, it is not the end of the world. You know, yes, this is important, but your mental health is important. Your physical health is important. And it's really nice to have somebody like that too. Yeah. Um, you mentioned mental health. How... I mean, what's your mental health journey been like throughout this, this endeavor you've gone through? Well, I mean, definitely I've had anxiety bad through this, you know, and there's been stages where I've had depression. Mm -hmm. um, and I've suffered with depression before when I was at a school that I hated and I just feel like I was stuck. And I think that's when the first time I really realized it was and then finally I started homeschooling and working towards my career and that changed everything but you know working with toxic people who have really tried to hold me down and you know keep me in a bubble or something like that that really you know that really gave me bad depression and then I would get really bad anxiety working with you know some of the same people wondering how they were going to affect my career or you know how they were going to represent me you know because they'd go and they'd talk to people like crap or, you know, do just ridiculous things and talk about one thing and then it'd be something completely different the next day, you know? Yeah. So it gave me really, really bad anxiety. And I realized, you know, I don't want to work with somebody who I can't trust and I can't depend on, you know, especially to represent, you know, my name, just because I like to consider myself a really nice person. And I got that Southern hospitality in me, you know, <laughs> I'll do anything for anybody just about. So I, I, that's what I want people to think of when I think of mine. Yeah. I, I think creatives in general just get really, um, you know, caught up with the whole mental health cycle and everything. It's really easy to be anxious and be depressed. Um, you mentioned it's such a lonely industry sometimes, right? right. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> just like anyone else, that stuff can get to you. And I, I think that's something creatives struggle with a lot. Right. I don't know and what the I, solution is either. <laughs> right. And I think, too, like we mentioned earlier, those highs and lows, you know, of you know, numbers and graphs and all that, you know, just looking at that and, yeah. you know, determining your worth and your artistry off that can be really toxic, too. So, I mean, I definitely recommend to any artist out there struggling or any person, find that person that you can lean on that will, you know, build you up and, you know, make sure – keep you accountable that you're doing okay. You know what I mean? So it's just super important. And, you know, comparison is a big thing in this industry. People will compare you know, themselves to you. You'll compare yourself to other people. And yeah. oh, well, this person's over here and, you know, they've been doing this just as long as me and they sped right past everybody. We're doing the same thing and working just as hard and yada yada, you know what I mean? So you really, this business is so unpredictable and you can't determine your worth off of it. You mentioned something that um, was kind of a similarity between, um, you know, Curtis Brawley. Um, I do. Yeah, uh, he was, uh, I think um, you might've been following him and that's how I reached out to you, wasn't it? Yes, he's super sweet. Super yeah. Sweet. I've never seen a person before, but he yeah. seems so talented. Yeah, um, well, he, he was on the podcast uh, back a few months ago, and we also talked about you know, just that comparison factor in, in, in the industry and how he, he mentioned that everybody's on their own timeline and um, just because something happened for somebody, you know, who's X years old or whatever, doesn't mean it's going to happen for you and vice versa. So, yeah, that comparison factor is huge and I can get to you too. Right. And there's no, you know, specific algorithm to this either, you know, and you can even have the exact same numbers, play just as many shows, have the exact fans and be the exact age, work to the exact years, and it's still going to be different, yeah. you know, 
there's no way to predict it. And so many people in this business will be like, I know how to make you famous. You know, if you work with me or if you do what I say or you pay me this much, I know how to make you famous. And that's just not true. Nobody specifically knows how to yeah. get you to the level you want to be or, you know, this business you ask anybody just about and they're like there's really no steps you know there's so many different ways, especially now with social media i mean that's just throwing a whole big curveball into the loop you know yeah. so definitely one of those things comparison can be really toxic for people and one of my favorite songs to listen to is 10 year town by Haley witters and she's doing so much right now and she talks about how She's 12 years into a 10 year town because you know Nashville's a 10 year town. And she's like, it's happening for all these other people. Why can't it happen for me? It's supposed <laughs> to be my time. 12 years in, you know. And it's just so nice to, you know, she was saying those words and then that was a big song for her. So when you listen to that, it kind of just shows that anything can turn around, you know, so quick. And yeah. You just know. And things can come out of nowhere too. Uh, I think you were right. you know, talking about with that song. Um, was that the like the turning point for her? It was. That song blew yeah. up her and you know <laughs> and that was one of her songs where she was about to break, you know, she's like, Oh my gosh, you know, this is this is crazy. I'm it's supposed to be my time yeah now and I think we all get that way sometimes and it's just really important to reframe your mindset as to why we do this. You know, because so many people they forget about the music part, you know, and I think that's one of those things where you know people need to be a little bit more lenient with us as artists when we go through slumps or we go through times where we're not doing yeah. you know everything that maybe we weren't we once were just because you know sometimes we need time to take a break to focus on our mental health or just focus on our music sit down in our piano and write you know because that's so vital to our well-being yeah definitely um so you've earlier in the conversation, you threw around some music terms on like co-writes and um, that was the one that stuck out to me. I've got an idea, but I don't know exactly what a co-write consists of. Um, so what's, what's that like? <laughs> well, it's collaborating with another writer, um, but it's different every time. Shoot, I barely know what a co-write consists of half the time. Um, you know, I've been doing a lot of them on Zoom because of COVID. And it's been very, very interesting because now I don't have to go to Nashville 24-7 and work with people. Now there's this whole new world, you know, Zoom. And we can come back to things a lot easier and take our time on things, which is great, you know. So sometimes we'll have, it'll just be me and another writer, me and two other writers. You just never know. But yeah. a lot of the time my co-writes, I'm really guilty of like, having a verse and a chorus done and then being like, what do I do now? <laughs> you know? That's where a new set of eyes comes in really handy. You know, just when you get stuck or you want to just build something from scratch together, or you both share an idea or a thought, you know, so or it was similar experience. So having two eyes on one song, I definitely think helps a lot. There's some things you need to say by yourself, but when you have those two eyes on it and you have two different perspectives, it can be a really, really cool thing. Yeah, collab or <laughs> I can't talk. Collaboration is really, really important. Like, um, just all the different perspectives and different ideas too. Like, you're—I right. mean, not everybody thinks the same. So, right. having somebody who kind of complements your thinking—that's huge. That's—I feel like that's where some of the real growth happens in those collaboration settings, right? It is, and you know, in the beginning, I would have so many co-writers. I'd go in and I'd be really excited, but I'd be a kid, you know, I didn't know how to go about it. I didn't yeah. know what even forming an idea to a song looked like, but that was so helpful to go in and work with another writer. But I would have some writers really help me and teach me and show me what it was like to form a song. And then some writers just be like, all right, listen to your ideas. We're doing it my way or the highway, mm -hmm. you know? So I think now that I'm a little bit older, I try to, help as many people as possible. And not to say I'm super old or anything, I'm only 15, but anybody I can help, you know, and show them, you know, I, how to do it, but actually listen to their ideas and take into consideration their thoughts. I mean, that's huge for an artist because I think it took me three steps back when I have a co-writer be like, you know, your opinion doesn't matter. 
you're not worthy enough to have an opinion. You know what I mean? So, and it would just be a lot, you know, because you're already going into this business where there's so many walls and there's so many people, there's cocky people, you know, and you just don't know how to go about that. You don't know what's up and what's down. (laughs) And so it's really intimidating, especially for a kid, you know? So now that I'm a little bit older, I try to make sure my voice is heard as much as possible. And I'm really collaborating with people because that's when you learn and that's when they maybe can learn from something from you. Yeah. Helping other or others is where you get that chance to give back to the people who right. help you. And it's like that full, full circle effect. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And it's really important too, you know, to make sure people know that they have a voice and that they yeah. can use like I keep saying, this business can be very, very intimidating. I'm still intimidated sometimes, you know, (laughs) and it can be very intimidating, but knowing, you know, your opinion matters, you know, you're worthy, you know, you get to, this is your music. You get to have a say so in it. That's a really big thing. And that's something you don't know when you start out. (laughs) I feel like nobody really knows that, you know, as far as they get into the career, every 30 seconds, there's another, instance where you're just like okay well what do I do next like every right. step you take there's always another one ahead of it right right definitely and then you know sometimes it's crazy because you have people telling you you know you can't take a break or you can't like chill for a second and then you know I think yes it's important to be a hard worker and don't give up and don't quit but sometimes too I mean there's nothing wrong with admitting hey I need a break Hey, I'm tired. Hey, I need a day off. And I'm really guilty. I'll overwork myself and then burn out. You know, I'll crash. And that's not healthy. So I'm trying to get better at time management and taking into consideration self-care and doing things like that just so, you know, I'm better when I come back, you know, and more consistent. So it's really important to learn those habits, you know. Yeah, I think consistency is where the real productivity happens, right? So if you're, I mean, if you've got ups and downs, everybody's got ups and downs, but if you're, if you're going through those and I guess my thing is I always try to minimize those up and downs. I, I know they're going to happen. It's just, if I can like make the gap like that big between the, the ups and downs, then it's more manageable. And I think I can focus my energy into other things that are right. productive. Right. And finding, you know, those turnaround things for you too as well. That's a big thing for me. You know, if I get burnt out on, you know, meetings or looking at numbers and da, 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 you know, then yeah. <laughs> I need to write a song or, Hey, I need to play my guitar. There'll be days where I'm like, I come home and like, I need to just play my freaking guitar. Everybody leave me alone. Just let me sit in my room and play my guitar, you know? <laughs> and that is so therapeutic for me. Just remembering you know, why I do it. I'll sing songs from some of my favorite artists. I won't even worry about, you know, what's my next single going to be? And, you know, I'll just, and that's the reason I started all of this. And it's so therapeutic and so helpful. Yeah. Who are your favorite artists? I'm like, I have so many. <laughs> but, you know, one song I love to come back and just play on my guitar is, you know, Bible in a 44, Ashley McBride, or Kaylee Hammock, or, you know, Loretta Lynn, Tammy Wynette, you know, I, I love old school country music so much. Um, it just holds a really special place in my heart because that's what I grew up on, you know, but yeah. I think a lot of people think, oh, she's, she only grew up on Merle Haggard and Hank Jr., which I love those people, don't get me wrong, but like, I knew, me and my brother knew every song on the radio every week when it came out. And I think that's a big part of my music too. Like, I know every Britney Spears song, you know? So, I mean, I also grew up with that, you know? I mean, so I listen to anything and everything under the sun. And anything that has true, honest writing in is what I'm going to gravitate towards the most. Yeah, that authenticity. Right. Right now, I love Marsha tapes by Miranda Lambert just because it's so acoustic and so bare but you can tell there's honest writing behind it and you know people can pick up on that I think people um sometimes forget you know when we're writing a song they'll be like oh nobody will know if it's true or not I can always pick up on a song you know Mm -hmm. you can always tell yeah (laughs) it's um the writing is always transparent 
you can right. see through that. So right. that's good. Um, this has been a great conversation and a lot of fun. Um, so, you've got a lot of insight. Gosh, <laughs> uh, is there anything else you want to talk about or share? Or, I mean, what's um, on your mind? I mean, anything and everything music related, I yeah. guess. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, I'm so glad that we got to talk a little bit about the business side because it is something, you know, I am passionate about just because yeah. it is a big part of what we do, whether we like it or not sometimes, you know, <laughs> I mean, definitely glad I got to share a little bit of insight just because too, I feel like so many people don't talk about it. So it left new artists like me kind of in the dark, like, oh my gosh, or maybe it's just not broadcasted, you know, I, but every time I'd go and look for advice, I'd be like, oh my gosh, what the heck do I do? You know, and I remember there were certain artists who wouldn't respond back to DMs and do things like that. So I try to answer as many DMs as possible and do things like that. I might not get to everyone, yeah. but I try so hard, you know. Um, I remember one time, this was before she went on Idol or anything, like I reached out to Gabby Barrett and <laughs> Gabby Barrett was like, welcome to the music industry. It sucks. <laughs> and I was like, yeah biggest songs of the year so I mean like that little things like hey you know I'm not alone on hard days and things like that you know so just little messages like that they make the biggest difference or even talking about it in an interview can help somebody so much yeah and help me oh, what were you gonna say I said because it helped me yeah yeah um so those dms and all the emails those are all opportunities too aren't they then right. You never I know when something's going to come up. Just about anybody, anybody relevant in Nashville, writer, producer, singer, has a DM for me, <laughs> whether it's a <laughs> week or five years ago. Like, so, I mean, I don't know if I can even speak for them. Half of them probably got spelling mistakes up in them because I was, like, 11 writing them, you know? <laughs> so... <laughs> That's a little embarrassing knowing those will never go away, but they're there. <laughs> they will on Instagram. You can do the unsend and yeah. Hey, I got to own my stuff. I got to be authentic. Yeah. <laughs> then you can send so and so unsend a message. And like, that's almost kind of just as concerning too. Like, what do <laughs> <are> you like? <laughs> you send them a message like five years later after you first reached out. Hey, just following up on this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> checking in i know you're busy but like i know you read this so <laughs> what's our next step <laughs> oh, that's funny <laughs> but everybody does it though that's the thing everybody <laughs> at every level everybody mm -hmm. does yeah <laughs> um so if you could go back do some time traveling here what would you tell yourself like however many years ago I, that's a lot of math right now but <laughs> I would tell myself it's all going to be okay. You know, I, there's been so many times where I've just been like, oh my gosh, this is the end for me. Or I don't know how I'm going to make inmates or, you know, pay this trip to Nashville or pay this demo off or whatever, you know. So I think I would just, just tell myself it's all going to be okay. It's all going to work out. You know, everything might not go perfectly, but you're going to be okay. You're going to be happy. You're <laughs> so blessed, you know and don't stress don't sweat the little stuff and even don't sweat the big stuff you know because at the end of the day none of that really matters you know what i mean the only thing that really matters is your connection to music so that's all i would tell myself awesome <laughs> so where can people find out more about you any of my social medias um or google me <laughs> can't promise you'll like everything you say but uh, <laughs> Um, you can follow me at official Hillary Reese on Facebook and Instagram. And there you can find all about me. Uh, but yeah, I'm so glad we had this talk. I'm so glad we got to dive deeper into music because I don't always get to do that. So it's really nice to do that. Yeah. Th thank you so much for coming on and just being authentic. That's what, I mean, that's what I'm all about. I love having people just open up and share their stories and share their opinions, um, expertise, you know, whatever it is they want to share, their passion, so I'm right. all for it. So thank you. 
<laughs> well, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Hey, what's up, you guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another episode of Coffee with Zach. Hope you're all having a great day because you're in for a great conversation. We've got Hillary Reese on to talk about the business behind the music business and what it was like breaking down those barriers and the challenges she faced along the way. We're going to get into it in just a couple seconds, but first, some housekeeping things. Hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment down below, tell us what you think. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. And then lastly, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, the review goes a long way. It gives us the feedback we need to keep going. So without further ado, let's just uh, jump right into it. Thank you guys so much for watching this. If you guys enjoyed this episode, leave a like down below. Um, hit that like button for sure. Subscribe. Turn on those post notifications. Get notified every time a new conversation comes out. Leave a comment down below. Tell us what you think. Again, a review on Apple Podcasts goes so far. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. I love diving deeper into all things music, the business, and balance in life and the industry. I hope to be back really, really soon. Thank y'all. Thank you so much again for coming on. It was honestly a pleasure. It was a great conversation. So appreciate it. <laughs> well, thank you. All right. Well, I'll, I'll see you guys next time. All right. Have a good night. You too. Bye. Bye.